Hello, welcome back. I hope you guys are doing well. In this video, I want to share you how to create detailed foliage scatters with a manual scattering mode in GeoScatter add-on. It's one of the most overlooked feature in the add-on by so many users, but I give it a few try and I fell in love with it. I have to give Asmu credit for this because he was the first to introduce me to this feature. I experimented with it for a while and now I want to share it with you guys. Now this video will mainly focus on explaining the tools of manual scatter and how to make it practical. To follow along you'll need a copy of add-on yourself and luckily they are having a 25% off sale for this month right now. So I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below for you to get the add-on. By using the link you'll also be supporting me through them when purchasing the add-on. So, to enable manual scatter, select any scatter system of your choice and under distribution tab, click on the drop down menu where it says random, change to manual. Now, you can enter the manual mode. A few things to know, if you have some other features like ecosystem, proximity or pattern on for your system, it might not work to its full capability as those features can overwrite the manual mode in a way so it's best to turn that off. If you have enabled culling mask like vertex group or paint, make sure to turn that off as well because that will make this work a lot more smoothly. Once you're done, click on manual mode and you'll be welcomed by a brand new UI with new sets of tools on the left. Right now, there are lots of tools for you to work with, but I won't get into all these tools just to shorten the overall length of this video. However, I'll be explaining a few of the tools that I like to use personally all the time. The first up is the dot tool. What it does is that it simply adds one single asset at a time. If you have multiple instances for your scatter system, it will cycle through all of them randomly with random skill and rotation. If you hold left click, you can move around until you find a position that you want it to be placed at. You can also change the skill, rotation and the randomness on the top menu bar. The next tool is just right beside the dot tool and it's called the post tool. It does the exact same as dot tool but gives you the ability to control over the size of the foliage. If you hold your left click and move your mouse around you can see the change of size in the foliage you scatter. This can be very useful if you want manual control over the size of the foliage you're creating. Another tool I like to use a lot is the spray tool. Once you select that tool it will change your cursor into a brush in the viewport. This tool will allow you to scatter foliage however many you want within the radius of the brush. You can change the radius of the brush by tapping F on the keyboard and moving your mouse left and right then click left click when you like the size of the brush. You can also change how many points you want the tool to scatter by going to the top menu and under the tool drop down you'll see points per interval. The higher the number is the denser it scatters and the lower the number is the more spread out your scatter will be. Another thing to note is the interval. The interval is like a rhythm of the tool scattering the foliage. If you hold down your left click, without moving you can see every interval is spawning X amount of points you've set in the tool settings. You can change how fast this interval is by going under the tool settings again and change the interval speed. The lower the number is, the faster the interval will be and the higher the number is, the slower the interval speed will be. Another important tool is the move tool. This tool will also give you a brush and you can change the radius of it just like before. And what it does is that it moves all the foliage within the radius of the brush to wherever you want them to be. Holding the mouse click and moving your mouse will move the assets until the release of the mouse click. And finally, we have the eraser tool. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's just delete any points you want to delete within the radius of the brush. Again, you can change the size of the radius by just tapping F and changing and moving a mouse. Now, a few more things to know is that all these tools only affect the selected scatter system. And if you go on to the top menu and click on the systems drop down, you'll see the scatter systems you have preset them to manual scattering mode. This is handy because you don't need to exit the manual scattering mode and re-enter it to scatter different systems but you'll have to preset your systems to manual beforehand. To escape the manual modes, just click on the exit on the top right and you're all set. 
Now that you know some of the tools that I like to work with, let's actually get practical and let me show you how I would normally use it in my pieces. So I've already made this simple pathway looking ground already. Uh, I use B Productions uh, vegetation add on for the trees and I've textured it, made, sculpted a little bit. And yeah, we're going to be scattering foliage on this using GeoScatter. To be able to use manual scattering mode, we need some systems to be scattered first. So I'm going to be using the biome scatter feature most of the time. Uh, I will also hide viewport just in case it spawns in loads and loads of um, foliage. It could crash my computer a little. So I like to hide that first and then unhide that later when I have control over how many scatter points I want. So let's click on open biomes. Let's reload. I, as you can see, I have loads and loads of scatter libraries, but we're going to be using the scatter pro libraries for this. I also like to scatter one layer at a time instead of using a whole biome. That way I get more control over what I want in the, um, the scene and I can mix and match between different biomes and it could come out pretty good looking. So that's what I usually do. So let me scatter some layers and then I'll get right back to you. So the first system I'm going to be tweaking is the forest meadow. It's basically a grass layer and I'm going to be using the spray tool with 20 points per interval and scatter across the plane except for the pathway part just to cover up most of the area with grass. Even though this tool is great, I still prefer the weight paint if I'm doing grass because that way I could cover a lot more grounds with shorter time because using the spray tool can get a little bit tedious if you have a bigger scene. After that, I selected my fern system and by choosing a lower points per interval value, I spawn in some of the ferns across the plane. Just tapping whatever I think it might grow. Sometimes I would make a group of them together and some parts I won't even spawn one and that gives a little bit more variety onto your scatters and i also use the dot tool afterwards to tap in individual assets here and there next up i choose the mossy rock system and by using the post tool i can spawn in and change the size of it as i spawn in those assets as you can see how handy this tool is because you can adjust how big you want the rocks to be and you can also select where you want the rocks to be so it gives you a lot of control over the placement and the size at the same time with this tool. The next system I'm going to be scattering is the Forest Young system. It's basically a smaller plant scattered across the ground. I uh, use a low points per interval and just use the spray tool to scatter across the plane. It is really important to have a reference to if you're creating a scene to know where these plants spawn and just have a manual control over the whole scattering system. Then I chose the post tool to spawn in little plants over the path just to give that realistic touch a little bit because you can see all those pathways in the forest where they have little plants growing even in, in the path itself. The more time you spend on this, the more detail it will get and you can spawn in a lot more systems and just use manual scattering mode to scatter them manually and have more control over what you scatter. Next system I scatter is the clover system. I use the spray tool and with higher points per interval I tap in around the area of the path to scatter the clovers around there. You can make some areas really dense and some areas really light with those scatters just to give that little variation and make it a little bit more realistic because nothing is even in real life in nature. And after that, we are done. Of course, you can spend a lot more time and making it a lot more detailed than I have here. 
This is just a demonstration just to explain the tool and how I would normally go about using them. So again, if you haven't grabbed a copy of Geoscatter yet, they are having a 25% sale right now for Cyber Month this month. So go ahead and grab yourself a copy of it. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below so that you can support me while getting this add-on as well. Again, this feature is a great feature added into the add-on and I've been using that for all of my scenes lately. It's so much better than using Wave Paint, so I really recommend trying it out. Mess around with the other tools as well and see what helps you the most and just use them, basically. And yeah, I hope you guys learned a thing or two from this video and I'll see you guys next time.